It now being uh, 2 o'clock, I will call the November 4th, 2024 Board of Selectmen meeting to order. This meeting is being presented for Cablecast and YouTube presentation by Area 58 Community Access Media. The video of this meeting is not to be considered an official public record. The approved minutes of the meeting will serve as the official record of the proceedings. Uh, first agenda item is the tax classification hearing. Mark, you want to? Um, so uh, I'll read this uh, notice uh, concerning the tax classification hearing uh, today, Monday, November 4th at 2 p.m. in the Deborah Sanson room. Um, as required by Massachusetts General Law, Chapter 40, Section 56, the Town of Plumpton Board of Selectmen will hold a fiscal year 2025 property tax classification hearing. During the hearing, the Board of Assessors shall provide all the information relevant to making such determination and the fiscal effect um, of the available alternatives. Based on information provided, the Board of Selectmen shall adopt a residential factor to be used by the Board of Assessors to determine the percentages of the fiscal year 2025 tax levy to be borne by each class of taxable real estate, or taxable real and personal property. The public hearing requires a vote of the Board of Selectmen for allocation of property tax classification. All persons interested in this determination may participate and be heard at the time and place stated above. Thank you. So, Holly, you're here. On November 4th, 2024, the Plimpton Board of Assessors voted to recommend a factor of one having residential, commercial, industrial properties assessed at the same rate. Um, I gave you a little handout if you want to follow along, if you want me to read it or not read it, whatever, I'll just go through it quickly. The town of Plimpton has just under 25% of commercial property, therefore a split rent rate is not recommended. Um, as you can see, the percentage of levy by classes down below, residential 75%, open space we have zero, commercial 12, industrial 2.9, and personal property 9.3. This year, fiscal 25, the average assessed value for a single family house is 532,902. Um, that's going up 3.5% this year. Last year, fiscal 24, single family homes went up 7.8%. So, a little bit better, mm -hmm. a little bit better. Um, examples of the shift, shift of tax rate were residential, commercial, industrial, and personal property. The first one is our tax rate, 1588. This year it went up 17 cents. Um, if you go down to the next line, you can see that if I shift it from 1477 to residential, the commercial goes up to 1921 and so forth, so forth, going down to 1327. The commercial industrial personal property would be 2374. Uh, next page is the approved new growth values. Residential, 1.6 million. Personal property, 6.4 million. Um, then tax levy new growth this year was 127,739. Top five taxpayers in Plimpton, Cisco, Eversource Energy, Brook Street Plimpton Solar One, Light Control Corporation, and GLC Mass Plymouth Site. It's a solar site. So Light Control now is current, right? So, mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, it's nothing, it's not Light Control anymore, right? That's what it's called, <laughs> Light Control Corporation. That's what it's called. In our books, we haven't changed it yet. That's oh, okay. what it comes up okay. on. Okay, so we report. should just. <clears throat> this came from a report from our, our camera system. Okay, so the Board of Assessors is also recommended not to adopt the following the open space discount. This is for land that's not developed, excluding chapter land, permanent conservation restricted land, and income producing parcels. The town is not protected by a lane, and there's, there's no penalty for change of use. 
Plimpton does not have parcels that are considered open space. The residential exemption, this is for cities and towns such as Boston, Nantucket, and Cambridge with high second home populations or resort communities. They benefit from this exemption. It's for owners of occupied residential properties and shifts the tax burden, burden to non-resident owners and multi-unit owners. There's no second homes in Plimpton. It's not like a resort community. Sure. Small commercial exemptions for communities that have adopted this exemption have a much higher percentage of commercial properties. Like I said on page one, we have 12% commercial. Yes. Um, the property owner receives the exemption is not required to pass a discount, discount along to the business owners. Plimpton already has adopted the exemption for personal property businesses valued at $2,000 or less. So the Board of Assessors is recommending that the Board of Selectmen vote no to the above exemptions in, in favor of factor of one, which means the residential and CIP properties are taxed at the same rate for fiscal 2025. I also um, passed along the LA-5 to Bree that you could sign and I can download right into Gateway with your signatures. And the Board of Assessors would also like to inform the Board of Selectmen that the excess levy capacity for the current year is $283,017.14. Good. And that would conclude my presentation. Uh, just a question, the 1588 tax rate we're going up 17 cents from last year. So up 17 cents. Yeah. Okay, and we're going up 3.5, 3. 3. basically. 5%, which is great compared to the 7.8% that we had to go last year. So people shouldn't see the no, same major should. hit that no, they, they had should. last year. No. Which is good. Yeah, it is good. So forgive my ignorance, what is the excess levy capacity? That's what we're not... Yeah, we have um, a certain ceiling that you're not allowed to go over, essentially, and we like to keep some sort of capacity when we're figuring out, like, funding things at town meeting, for example. It's kind of like our safety cushion. Mm -hmm. um, you could technically expend up to that, but it would obviously be a huge hit for the taxpayers. So we mm -hmm. always try to stay below it, but that Actually, is our we got um, excess. That was a little over 300,000. That's what I remember. Last year was like, what was it, 304 or Three, something yeah. like that. Yeah. Um, so this is good. Like so a lot of places go right up to, yes. to the limit. And that was really my question, is I, um, that that does leave us a reasonably good question. It's like, I would say it's like more than reasonable. Yes. Yeah. You know, Do most you, towns go. Does like the state right push up. back on that at all, though? No. So um, interestingly enough, a few years ago, we had a situation where we had so much excess levy capacity that DOR actually kind of sounded the alarm. I think that may have been right as you were coming on board and helped us get everything in order. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, they said it's rare to see towns of this size and not expending um, that much and what ends up happening in some of those cases if you leave that much on the table when you eventually do need to pay for something fund something it, it comes as a huge hit to the taxpayers mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. um, and also I think they were pushing back on you know why are you out for grants when you have this right, excess exactly. le levy exactly this is a fair question to leave though honestly. though this feels good yeah yes. this is nice this is a like a good amount mm -hmm. Okay, so we need a motion. You need a motion. I passed them along, yeah. It, oh, I'm sorry. Thank you. Okay, I'll make a motion to vote no to the open space discount. A second. second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 A motion to vote no for the, to the uh, residential exemption. Uh, second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion to vote no to the small commercial exemption. Second. I'll make a vote. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Got lost in all that. <laughs> Motion to vote in favor of the factor of one, which means the residential, commercial, industrial, and personal property classes are taxed at the same rate for fiscal year 25. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you.
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate you guys. Thank you. Oh, you know what? I'll give it to you. I'll give it to you. I guess we need this signed. <clears throat> Where am I signing here? Anywhere. Anywhere? Okay. I guess so. Signatures. Yeah. It says no signatures display. That kind of threw me off. Great work on getting this pulled together for November. This is fantastic. Yeah. I guess maybe my Do we need all yeah, three? Yeah, very early. Um, yes. Okay. yes, please. Okay. Um, I'm kind of pleased oh, because you know, Christine is working. She's going to you down. Yeah. We use it December. I know. <laughs> Christmas Eve. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. <laughs> Scrambling hard. Yeah. This is good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. That was great. Thank, Thank you so you much, Holly. Thank you. Have a good night. Okay, uh, Mike Slauson is here from do an update on the Plimpton Public Library. Welcome, Mike. Uh, Mike, right. come up as close as you can, and I'll remind you that at least one of us up here has a very old ear. Okay, it's so, not you though, right? Uh, we want to hear every <laughs> word. <laughs> So I'm just going to go over some of the things that we've been working on the last uh, last year or last couple years at the library, and uh, just give everybody an update on all the all the really great things that are happening there. Uh, so for this year, uh, we just finished submitting our yearly reports for the library. That's our financial report and our statistics report, um, and we're compliant with everything for that. So we should be eligible as usual for our state aid funding, which is usually around five to $6,000 a year that we get uh, from the state. That's really important money because that money can be used for anything we want. So if there's a building issue, if there's programming we want to do, um, uh, it also keeps us certified as a library. So we've met everything uh, for that. So we should look forward to our state aid again next year. Circulation numbers were really good this year. Or last fiscal year for the library. Um, our total checkouts went up by 871, which for our, for our size library is, is really good. Is, an, is a really nice to see that, that increase and uh, it lets me know that people are using the library, people are using the collections, we're making good selections as far as books and, and, um, and movies and, and, uh, other, and other things that we have in our collection. Uh, for the buildings and grounds at the library, uh, we just recently received the uh, Green Communities Grant uh, that was going to allow for some heat pump installations at the library. That I can't take much credit for. That was uh, Liz and the, the uh, Town Properties Committee worked really hard on that and uh, I think it's going to be a great benefit to the library. It's going to be peace of mind for me. Uh, I'm sure most of you are aware that the heating system at the library is a, is a pretty serious concern. Uh, so this should mitigate a lot of those issues that we're facing with that now. Uh, we're gonna, it looks like for that work, we're going to be closed the week of November 11th. Uh, Monday, right now, planning for Monday through Friday on that week. We'll see how, as we get towards the end of the week, if they need Saturday as well. Uh, another grant that we just recently got this year was a, a $20,000 grant from the American Library Association. This was for accessibility in the library, and we were able to get uh, several things with this grant. Uh, we had a, a few months back, we had a, a community roundtable, community discussion, where we talked to people who use the library and, and asked them, how could we make the library more accessible? Uh, there were a lot of ideas, and it was, it was hard to sort of fit everything in under, under the budget. Uh, 
but we've managed with this $20,000 to solve a number of problems, and I think the, the number one problem was our front entrance ramp. If anyone's ever entered the library in the winter when it's snowing or, or when it's cold, it's a real hazard, that, that ramp. Uh, so one of the things we got is a, uh, a map, a heated map that will be on, on that ramp that is, uh, it has a sensor on it, so it will go on automatically when the temperature is below a certain point and when the moisture is above a certain point. So that should solve the, the issues that we have with uh, the slippery entrance ramp. Another thing we did was install a, a rain diverter on the roof above the ramp. Part of the, part of the issue we were having is that the gutters on that building don't extend out far enough, so anytime there's heavy rain, it cascades right over the gutter and it goes right onto that ramp and just makes it a sheet of ice. Uh, so we got a, a rain diverter installed, so it's still going to go over the gutters, but it's going to be going over into the gardens rather than onto that ramp. Uh, another thing, another issue that came up when we had our community discussion about accessibility was the space in the back, in the adult side of the library, space where we have our first Saturday programs. And it's very tight back there, especially when we have chairs and tables and things like that out. So uh, we, we, with this $20,000, we got four new mobile foldable tables. Those, those we can move all around the library, use wherever we want. Uh, we got a new uh, uh, spinning magazine rack so we can uh, take Right now, if you've been back there, we have about half of the walls taken up by, by a magazine space. This will completely get rid of that <laughs> shelf and we'll have it on, on a spinning rack. Um, and then we also got uh, eight new single-sided shelves. So that room is going to be completely opened up. The shelves will be, al will be along the side of the walls and we'll have that entire space for chairs, for tables. Uh, it's, it'll, it's really gonna make a difference back there. It'll, it'll make it much more usable. I'm also getting some estimates for some lights on the front of the building over the entrance and the parking lot. Um, another thing we've done is, and uh, I'm sure Mark is, is aware of this, we've applied for a, a CPC uh, funding for a redesign of the back patio of the library. And uh, I think that is a, it's already a nice spot, but it, need, it needs to be more usable. And I think having, uh, having an area out there that we could use for programs, we can use for uh, music or concerts or <clears throat> anything that the, the town wants to, um, I think it would be excellent. And along with the baseball, <coughs> I think having those fields redone and the popularity of those and having it in such close proximity to that, it'll, it'll give people um, a space to use around town. So I'm, I'm excited for that. Um, and we'll be meeting with the CPC in December. Another thing I, I thought I should mention here uh, were the gardens this year. We were really lucky to have volunteers. It was a complete volunteer job on the gardens this year. They looked beautiful. Uh, not only were they, they maintained and, and weeded throughout the year by probably 15 to 20 different members of the community, we also added new gardens. Uh, and this was Allison McSweeney. Um, a Halifax resident, but she's a she's a uh, frequent visitor to the library and a frequent library user. She put together the whole volunteer committee. She recruited people, and she she basically took charge of the gardens, and they came out amazing this year. Amen. So I'm looking forward to to doing that again next year. For our collections, um, I tr every year I try to do a, a, a long-term project throughout the year, something that we, we can focus on that will, will make a change, a positive change at the library throughout the year. This year what I wanted to do was look at the adult nonfiction collection. Our adult nonfiction collection is very aged. Um, so what we're looking at doing right now is, is weeding out a, a large number of books. Uh, right now I'm thinking anything that's, that hasn't been checked out in three years is, is just taking up space on the shelf. So uh, we're going to weed out anything three or more years on the shelf and uh, we're going to be updating that with, with some new books. 
we're also going to be moving the nonfiction collection to the back of the library. It's going to be where the fiction section is now. Uh, looking at our numbers from last year, the fiction is about double the checkouts of what nonfiction is, so I think that makes sense to have that up in the front where more people will be, will be using it, more people will be seeing it. Uh, and then just some on the back of this page, there's some additional items <coughs> since the last time that I've, I've spoken to the, the board of selectmen. If you haven't come by and seen our new children's room, I encourage everyone to come by and look at it. It, it really came out nice. Uh, that was a, a huge effort from the library staff uh, to, to get the funding for that and then also to uh, put in the effort to design it, to pick out the furniture, pick out the colors. Uh, and I should say the trustees played a really key role in that as well. Uh, we got new shelving back there, we got new furniture, uh, and we also replaced the uh, non, the kids' nonfiction collection. And it, the numbers since we've replaced that nonfiction collection have really skyrocketed. So I think we, we made the right choice with that. And um, it's, it's really, it's getting, the nonfiction collection is getting used very, very free, frequently. Uh, we also got new carpet throughout the building last year. Um, another great thing that we have at the library that's probably one of the most popular things is uh, with a technology grant we got from the Association for Rural and Small Libraries. Uh, we bought all new public computers. We got a 3D printer, which is extremely popular with, with uh, kids and, and adults. I can't count how many things I've printed up over the last <coughs> couple of years. Um, and we also got virtual reality, which is, is popular as well. Um, and then finally, we also got new double doors in the children's room and a new emergency exit door in the back of the building. So things are going really well at the library. Uh, we have a lot of support from the community, I, I, and we have a lot of support from, uh, from the, the town as well. So I'm looking forward to that continuing in the next few years. Um, so uh, Mike, I appreciate your reference and appreciate the comprehensive report. Um, I remember a year or two ago there was some um, discussion and I've forgotten the name of this thing, but it was something like Library of Found Things. Oh, or? Library of Things, yeah. So that's another another collection we have at the library is, is our Library of Things. And that's, you could say it's a not books, a collection of not books. So it's, uh, we have all sorts of things from board games and puzzles to uh, night vision cameras and trail cams and Roku's for people to check out. So if you, uh, if you don't have a Disney Plus subscription, but you want to watch something on Disney Plus, you can come check out our Roku and watch about that. Um, and I'd like to expand on that as well. It's all, all, all sorts of different ideas. This would probably do great business with leaf blowers this yeah. time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've, I've thought about that. The, well, one of the ideas with, with the Library of Things is getting things that people may use once or twice a year, but don't want to go out and you know pay $500 for it and then use it once. Um, so things like leaf blowers or things like um, a lot of libraries will have the, the roof snow rakes so to, you know, to, to get the snow off of your roof or um, a carpet cleaners or you know, th things like that, things that you might only use a couple times a year. Um, why buy it when you can come check it out at the library? So that's, that's a collection that I'd, I'd like to expand on as well. That's a, I think it's, that's a great project. Yeah, I hope that it expands. Moreover, I hope people kind of become aware that it's there. Yeah, yeah. We, we're, and, and people, it does get good use. Uh, certain items more than others. The Roku's get checked out, are, are pretty much always checked out. Um, and I'm glad you mentioned that because one of the other things I wanted to mention here is for our, our adult nonfiction collection that we're replacing, we have right now up on Facebook a, an, an interest survey for the people around town. So uh, I want to know what people are interested in so I know what <coughs> books I can get. I mean, I can look at what's been checked out, but um, I also want to hear from people who maybe don't use the library. What, what, what would get them in? What type of books could we get? that they might be interested in to come, to come in and check out. Um, so I encourage anyone who's, who's listening or anyone who's interested to check out our Facebook, take the survey, and, uh, and let me know what, you, what books you'd like to see in the library. The, maybe, uh, go ahead, Dan. Maybe that should be attached to our uh, Facebook page for the town of Plumpton, yeah, too. Just, and maybe have like a, a post, yeah, we'll, and have a post we'll about that. We'll share it to okay. the town one, <clears throat> link people over there. Hmm. 
The kiosks that we you've got a couple around town. How are they good doing? Good. I actually just uh, I just closed them down for for the year. For the winter. Um, but those get a lot of use, especially the one at Dennett. I don't think this one gets uh, up by the fire station gets as much use, but the one at Dennett, uh, every couple weeks I would go and check it out, and there would always be different books in there because people are taking it and swapping it. I this year I think I filled it initially, and then that was it. People from the community took just books keep and, going. Okay. So th those are going really well. Should we move this one? Uh, maybe, Something to think uh, about. Well, I, I'm thinking, I, I think it's a good spot because it's near the fields. Yeah. And um, maybe give it another year there, see, see how it goes. I don't think it's been, uh, it's been neglected. It's definitely been used, yeah. but not as much as the one at Dennett. But that just might be because there's more action sure, at sure. that field. When you look at the, I'm sorry. Wait, no, she does he do the one here? Yeah, the one right by the snack shack. Oh, no, I meant the, um, it's the a little one oh, in our oh, this one, yeah, there. yep. There's all those people looking at that. Yeah. All of them. I'm glad you, I have to fill that one up. I'm glad you're mine. <laughs> the, um, when you look at DVDs versus books now, uh, books holding their own? Oh, yeah. The, yeah. Books, books are definitely holding their own. In fact, DVDs aren't holding their own. They're not. Yeah, it, it's, there's, there are people that check out DVDs, but a lot of people come in and tell me, I, you know, I don't even have a DVD player. Yeah. Anymore. Um, yeah. I, I personally don't have one. I, yeah. you know, I think a Streaming is a big and, yeah. And that and that's why I think having things like the Roku to check out, you know, where you can check out one DVD or you could check out one Roku and have access to thousands and thousands of, of things to watch. So I think it, expanding that uh, collection, maybe getting a. Um, right now we have Disney Plus and we have Hulu on the Roku, so maybe expanding that into an HBO or Netflix or something mm -hmm. along those lines. <coughs> get some more some more checkouts as well is there any um, sort of synergy with the school library yeah so I, I talk to her frequently I, I I'll usually at the beginning of the summer I'll go to the school and talk about our summer reading program mm -hmm. um, and I'll also I also go to the school and do uh, for read across America I do a story time with the, with the kids there which is Great. I have to say my favorite day of the year so. I'm a big fan, so, you know, I think you're doing a great job. Well, thank you. Thank yeah. you. It's a, it's, a, it's a great town to work in. I, I feel like I have the support of the town, and I feel like I have the support of the community. So it's... Uh, I hear nothing but good feedback. Thank you. Yeah. And it's nice because it's interesting when we hold the first Saturday meetings, you know, it's the population is my age. Yeah. <laughs> and yet on the other side of the building... I mean, it's going on with there about this high. Yeah. So it's nice to see that difference, that synergy. And, and I think that the new children's room has, has really been a boon to, to bringing in new, new families. I think there are, there's a lot of young families in town with, with, with young kids. And I think once word got out that we had this great new children's room with all this great stuff to do, uh, I started to see a lot of faces that I hadn't seen before. So. I will also say when... Um, we have some outside speakers come in. When they walk into that room in the back, yeah. they, their mouth drops open. You know, they all rave about it, the architecture of yeah. the room because you just don't see it in these modern buildings. So it's I, really- I agree. It's, it's a special building and that, especially that side of the building yeah. is, uh, is, is beautiful and it's, it's welcoming. And I think with this, with this grant, with the new shelves back there, they're gonna match the, the, the decor that we already have it's not going to be any uh, any big changes and um, I think we can we can work too on uh, making that room even more uh, even more welcoming and I know I've talked to you about maybe getting some things from the historical society and, and putting them right. up on some some Plimpton uh, centered things from the historical society yep. putting them up on the walls so uh, that that'll be a, a, a great community room that's a project for this year, so this coming year, yeah. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah. great. We enjoyed the trick or treat. Oh, good. <laughs> they all had fun. It seems like it's growing more and yeah. more. Yeah. So yeah. It's great to see. Well, Heather, Heather Sanda, who's our, our, does all of our story times, <clears throat> does an excellent job. And she, she brings in a lot, of, a lot of people. And word gets around, too, because I talk to other other library directors and other children's librarians and people come into their libraries and talk about Miss Heather. 
So it's, it's great to have her. Good, good, excellent. Do you have any comments? Chief? No, he's doing yeah. a fantastic job. Yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mike. Yeah, Appreciate it. Everyone. If we can do anything, let us know. I will. Thanks. Take care, everyone. Mark, you're going to do an update on the community preservation? Yeah, a quick update. Um, um, we had three new applications during the application period for Community Preservation Act funds. Um, the application period, September 1st through October 15th. Um, the, uh, the committee hasn't met yet to review these, so uh, my purpose today is really just to um, uh, let my fellow selectmen know that there are three new projects that we will be looking at. Our process is to have a first meeting, meeting with the applicants, um, questions about the project, potentially suggestions that might help or improve or at least clarify the project. Then early next year, another meeting um, uh, with, uh, to look at any revisions in the applications. At that time, we send the applications out to all the board's commissions um, and committees in town, seek all their input. Once we have their input, we have a public hearing. We decide then which um, projects would be referred to town meeting uh, for a final vote. Um, most of the time, the applications are referred, though not always. So our next meeting, which will be the first review of these, is December 3rd and uh, at 5.30 percent in this build, uh, or at 5.30 p.m. Um, in this building. Um, uh, anyone's welcome to come. Just a super brief overview of the three projects. The first one comes from the library. We did a project with them several years ago. It was a really good one. We chronic um, dampness problems in the basement yeah. that just never got straightened out, yeah. and we were able to find a cost-effective solution. So I, we're excited about having another project um, from the library. This one, um, as Mike mentioned, would be a redoing in the patio in the back, the putting in of granite steps along an amphitheater-like um, uh, approach and, um, uh, and landscaping. So this would be a meeting area, recreation area, presentation, games. Um, uh, looks like a pretty interesting project. So that's project number one, that's from the library. Project number two is from the Recreation Commission. Um, we um, did a project with them last year, which was the renovation of the small field and um, lighting. Uh, they'd like to continue that process, um, uh, a fence needing replacement, and then a whole bunch of upgrades on the large field. Um, uh, that one is coming in, I think it's $64,000. The library one I didn't mention is something like $52,000. And then the third project is Open Space Committee has come back to us um, asking for further pre-acquisition um, open space um, funds. Uh, we've done a uh, article like that two or three times, kind of important article because it gives them money to be kind of agile when an opportunity arises. Um, it's that kind of money ahead of time, not having to wait for town meeting that's allowed um, us to do, to create Cato's Ridge, to create um, Two Brooks Preserve, and especially to uh, to create uh, Turkey Swamp. So they'll be back there looking for $40,000 this time. Um, we'll need to check in with them, particularly because the, the stumbling blocks invariably on these projects are making sure that um, prevailing wage has been fit in, um, making sure that proper procurement things have been done, and, and what Community Preservation Committee has always um, required essentially is a really significant um, uh, over budget fund usually put in at 20 percent um, added to the application fee so we don't get to a place where a project can't be finished um, that's most of what I had to say the only other thing to say is um, 
uh, for citizens concerned about taxes, the money involved in all these pro projects is money that has already been collected um, and included in that is the 20 to 30 uh, percent state match that we wouldn't have otherwise. Um, and just to give people a feel for what our balances are, um, aside from the projects underway already, um, in the open space bucket we have $10,000, historic reserves $60,000, um, community housing $149,000, and then the budget reserve and the undesignated $352,000, a small amount of administrative funds. The point being that even beyond the projects already going on, we have $575,000. We've been very um, frugal over the years and careful, um, really, really careful, actually, um, with CPA dollars. And um, uh, it gives us the opportunity, when a really good project comes along, to have funds to deal with it. I might just highlight the one about the community housing. We have $150,000 in that money that will be dedicated to some form of community housing. I doubt that would be used to build a single house these days that would even barely um, uh, buy a, a housing, a buildable lot. But I think what we envision is someday the opportunity to use that as seed money um, for other grants to come in. Um, truth being, we're always on the lookout, along with other committees in town, for a large tract of land that could become a multi-use project um, uh, that would include affordable housing, agriculture, open space, community well, and we're always keeping an eye out for that, and some of these funds someday, when we find the right property, could be dedicated to that. So that's what we're about and the work we're doing. Yeah, that's great. How many people are on the board? There are nine of us. Nine um, of us. Uh, most of us uh, mandated by the Community Preservation Act from various boards and commissions, and then two or three of us that are appointed by the Board of Selectmen. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good stuff. I mean, we've certainly, when you look at the projects over time, it's been amazing. Yeah, it's, been able it's, it's, it's the most fun to drive around town and know we did that project, know we did that yeah. project. Um, um, I, I sort of play this game of which one I'm most proud of, and albeit I love um, the, all the open space projects, the, uh, 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 the playground at, at elementary school, um, and for one reason or another, that silly, damp library that was a thorn in everyone's sides forever, yeah. and we were just able to take care of that one. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. and actually, that's my rave. I might as well. Can I get my rave sure, out of the way ahead. ahead of time? So my rave is the Community Preservation Act and the committee. The Community Preservation Act gives us the chance to work on these kinds of projects <coughs> that might not be done otherwise. And I think part of the genius was the, pro the categories chosen. Part of the genius was the name. Community preservation is exactly what these kind of projects do. It is open space preservation, historic preservation, um, uh, uh, those kinds of things that make a community and preserve the community. And my last piece is um, the Communi Community Preservation Committee um, I think I've been on it about 15 years, probably chaired it for a dozen years. No offense to the Board of Selectmen or any other board or commission in town. It's the best committee in town. We wow. have more fun. People bring us cool projects. We work with them to spit them up and make them even better. And, be and better yet, we have money to deal with it. So great committee to be on. And uh, if there's ever an opening out there, don't miss the chance, the opportunity. So this is a paid commercial, that's, that's it? Paid, yeah, there you go. I yeah. did it. Paid for by... Um, uh, um, citizen support for the great projects that keep the town yeah. going. Big fan of this too. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's been great. We've certainly done a lot of things and the historical society, you know, it's been a real help. Yep. Okay. Warrants paid, Bree. $6,647.87. Okay. Town administrator updates. So we have um, 
Going out for quotes, the specs will be available Wednesday, is the insulation work that needs to be done um, at this building up in the attic as part of the roof replacement project. Um, we've had some bumps in the road as far as getting that project um, done and through to completion. Um, but our hope is that somebody can mobilize pretty quickly and get the spray foam insulation done so that we can move on from that project. So specs are available. Um, Wednesday, we have our architect on board who's assisting us with that. And um, we hope to ideally get something in place, a contract, um, hopefully for your first meeting in December. We'll be at a spot where we can sign off on a contract to get that work done before it gets too chilly out. Good. Um, so that's moving ahead. Um, as Mike Slauson mentioned, we have the contractor lined up for that work at the library. Um, and he had indicated that if there are any programs that were pre-scheduled, he'd work on finding, either seeing if they can meet here or at the police department community room, something like that. So um, he'll make sure that it's put out there on social media and everything if people are looking for their normally scheduled programming. Um, we have an internal financial team meeting coming up um, late next week and um, a key part of that was actually the work that Holly did and the Board of Assessors um, getting us to this spot where we're at today. Um, so we'll be looking at everything kind of big picture um, perspective on things for fiscal 26. Um, we're also planning on having a very preliminary discussion with the Town Properties Committee chairperson about what their vision is as far as timing and affordability to get going with the fire station project. Um, I'll that, be there for that too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And um, that said, we have, um, at, it's the same date as your next meeting on November 18th. Um, there is a finance committee meeting that's being set up and um, some of the school folks will be coming to that. I think that they're having some budget issues at Dennett in this current fiscal year um, as a result of some things with Silver Lake and the special education funding. Um, so they want to talk to the finance committee about that, but that's an open public meeting. And, um, is that at the same time or is that? No, it's at four. Four o'clock, okay. Yeah. Great. Right. Um, and that one you're going to post? Correct. For us as I'll well? post it just so that it, there's a quorum. And what was the date on the one with the uh, chair of town properties? That's um, just an internal staff meeting. It's um, November 14th, I believe. Is that the Thursday? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So we should have a lot of good information for that finance committee meeting. Um, but my thought is that after the finance meeting on the 18th, um, I think that people need to start thinking about like big picture for next fiscal year. Um, we're gonna have to obviously fund finishing off the well project for the town campus. Can't do anything if we don't have water and it's one of the conditions with DEP yeah. um, that we need to construct those wells. So. Uh, the remaining ARPA funds are not going to cover that to completion, mm -hmm. so we're going to have to kick in money for that. Um, we need to look at the fire station and next steps for that. And then if they are having more difficulties at Silver Lake as far as the schools go, um, I think it's all things that need to be on our radar. And I think when we're looking at next fiscal year and going into that budget process, it's just stuff that we all need to keep in mind. And I think we need to be looking at it from a very broad perspective to make sure that yep. we're not um, you know, doing one thing that somehow negatively impacts something else. Um, We've got, a, also, got um, a lot of variables. A lot of variables, a lot to think about in terms of timing and yep. what is the most advantageous for the town. Um, same thing if we're going to be borrowing, um, you know, looking at those rates and I don't know, maybe some different things should be rolled together. Maybe there are ways of doing some of this work that yeah. we haven't really thought about. Um, but I think that we're going to want everybody's 
buy-in and involvement with that. Um, so yeah. that's happening. That's good. Um, another thing to think about too, um, I was speaking to somebody over the weekend uh, who does a lot of work with municipalities with um, like road construction contracts. And um, they were asking how we fund our road repairs, because the Chapter 90 money, while it's great, is rarely enough to truly maintain your mm -hmm. infrastructure. And I said, oh, well, typically each year, we um, appropriate from our capital fund, um, usually around 200000 or so, keeps getting funded each year. Um, and they were saying that in some of the towns that they've worked in, they've actually done um, like borrowing and they've done a set amount like each year for 10 years and it gets it to a place where the infrastructure is largely up to date and they said you know you wouldn't have to maybe project it out for 10 years but if you got um, a fairly good rate and you borrowed and you could put it out for a little bit but if it would settle like all your infrastructure that after so many years, let's say, whether it's eight years or 10 years, that your infrastructure could be maintained with the Chapter 90 money by itself, like then it wouldn't be that constant withdrawal um, from the capital fund. So I don't know if that would work for us or not, but it was definitely an interesting way of funding some of that work. And I think as we go forward, especially where the ARPA money is going to become a thing of the past, kind of like the CARES money, like that ran out at a certain point. I think a lot of the cities and towns are going to need to get creative and figure out other means of getting some of these projects done and making it feasible. Um, well, there's no doubt that the capital account was a wise thing. It absolutely. served us as well. And almost every town that talks to, we talk to, says we wish that we had done that when there was a major influx of right. industry. Um, I'm not sure if it makes sense for us, but I think it's worth the financial team taking a look at and discussing right. and see, right. you know, come back with some thoughts. So that's all I have for my update. In correspondence, we, this is exciting, we received our first projects on town grounds and town buildings form. Oh. Um, <laughs> Is it from us? Well, no, so it's from the Recreation Commission, um, <coughs> which they already had approval to do this work. It's kind of finishing off their original CPC project, but I really appreciate Mark Riley and Angelo Boccolini and all the work that they've done. Yep. So. They wanted to make sure that they were on firm footing with everybody as far as um, some last minute surficial work over at Holt Field. There's some different like lips in the concrete and some different things over there that they want to smooth out. And they also want to um, flatten the area and deal with some like ruts and dips in the ground and everything for the site of the future walking path. Um, so they're already set up to do this, but I wanted to bring it forward nonetheless so that if you see them working out there, you know what that is. It's all pre-approved, and um, it's pretty much being done with volunteers. Yeah. Um, they've done a ton of work out there with volunteers. It's really remarkable. If somebody had told me two years ago we would have lights on the field, we'd have graded the, the uh, field for the smaller field and we're having new fencing all the things that it's and, it and takes people <coughs> with the energy to go off and make that happen it's a good collaboration I mean, certainly we approve CPC funds for that but they've done a really good job of bringing yeah. in volunteer labor um, and fundraising and I those are the great projects when they're multi multi sources multiple sources and it's not relying just on tax dollars it's great yep. and um, one other thing i just wanted to mention for an upcoming meeting i think we should have an agenda item regarding the old townhouse and some punch list items of work that needs to be done there okay um, in the interim i would like to get some preliminary pricing on insulating that room that the mold remediation was done in okay um, 
Because right now, if that room is being heated, it's it's not. Arm yeah. The door is closed. I don't know how I it's. I know, being. but there's heat. Yeah, getting out. You sure? Because I was told it was shut off. No, no, it's going through the vent, and I just I don't want us. We have a really good setup though with that heat pump. Now we got our energy costs like no. almost down to. I'm not opposed to it, but to it nothing, seems to me you can just close off the uh, heating panel, the uh, piece in there. I don't think so. You can do it in any room, in any house. It's still, there was still like heat. Somebody's. Yeah. And who's telling us this? Steve. Yeah. I'll speak to him, but go ahead, sure. Okay, so we're gonna get some pricing so that we can finish that off and not have the heat get in. Okay. So you've done your array, Mr. I did. Yeah. Then mm -hmm. anything you want to mention? I'm good. So I guess I have a rave. Uh, you didn't I do the minutes. Hmm? You didn't do the oh, minutes. Oh, do we have minutes? Which ones? 1021. 1021. They were sent out. Mm -hmm. A couple you had edits. I did them and we sent them. Uh, yes. I was okay with those. I did read those. You okay with those, Mark? Yes. Okay. So I'll make a motion that we accept the minutes of October 21st as edited. Is that as written now? As written now. Okay. Uh, second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Great. So my rave would be um, I got it. One is that this election is finally drawing a close to a close, and the TV I can finally watch it without being overwhelmed with election commercials. So that's going to be a big plus. Also thought um, I'd like to give a shout out for the veterans, uh, for the Council on Aging and the work they do with uh, the Director of Elder Affairs to put on the <coughs> veterans breakfast or buffet each, uh, each month. I think it's uh, really important and I think they're doing a great job. And if there's any veterans out there that aren't aware of it, they should drop in. I think they'd find uh, people that are of their same opinions and share some of their stories. So unless we have anything else, I'll make a motion that we close the meeting uh, of November 4th. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.